yeah. We got Excellent. there. Excellent. There it is. Melvin, you are looking very sharp. You know Thank that. you. I, I get to yeah. compliment him off on the pod, <laughs> and then off the pod, it's an entirely di- different atmosphere. Some would call it abusive, even. Well, if you want the, the true audio, uh, if you want the real, the real behind the scenes audio, you gotta get that next tier on Patreon. <laughs> Daniel, I think like time to talk about the Patreon. <laughs> Daniel mentioning a Patreon that we don't have is definitely a bingo space on the card. For <laughs> <laughs> Repeated references to a Patreon. Uh, before we, we don't start, like that. to thank our new subscribers, uh, Fred Dingo, Bob Beerheart, <laughs> uh, Mr. Fa- Beast, Fancy Man Jones, uh, Beast. Played by Kelsey Grammer in the original X Men films. <laughs> we don't have time for this, frankly, timeless riff that's always going to be funny. Uh, no matter, you, no why, matter why how not? far in age this happens, we don't have time for another ageless Belvin riff uh, that can carry us a hundred years and still be as crystal funny as it was. <laughs> Razor <We've> Crane got- <laughs> from MASH. Uh, I got bad news, and the execs who own our podcasts. Amazon.com. Uh, they sure. want a sequel to Squid Game, which is grossed what eight hundred million fucking dollars now. Top of the yeah, box office. So you yeah. got the wrong network, but yeah, yeah, no, it, it makes sense. Amazon wants their own, and they want it to be a sequel. It, it wouldn't be season two <laughs> if it's. They're How up. are we going to capitalize on the tremendous success of the first Squid Game movie, uh, while also staying? True to its original, but improving on it in our own unique way. Well, why don't you tell the audience what you think Squid Game is about? Well, I'm going to stop you right there, Dan, because <laughs> I'm an author that believes that too close a material, a connection to the source material can actually really impede. Yeah, it's a real uh, hack move uh-huh. to be writing a sequel and be like, oh, what happened in the first one? What well, <laughs> was the name of the main character in the first <laughs> one? What happened in it? Just any plot beat. What, is it what was the premise? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that, that's some what hack shit. The, yeah. For instance, what is the squid game? We don't care. We don't care what the squid game is. <laughs> I, I think know we can hazard some guesses as to what. I mean, it's not that hard, yeah, frankly. Yeah, I've read Watchmen. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the guys with the masks. They're like the Ro- we're calling them the Rorschachs, by the way. Uh, in this new, <laughs> oh, so we can violate more copyright. <laughs> okay. uh, so if DC Comics can violate, we can. For the listener, this episode's a bit of a departure from our traditional podcast experience. And if you want to really sit in on a uh, TV slash movie writers room, uh, listen to this one. If you want to get more of a gist of what our normal podcast is like, listen to literally. At any other episode uh, that we've done where we make fantasy worlds, this is about making money. And this is about real actor. <laughs> we've been 30 minute worlds in the past. Today we're 30 minute Hollywood. We're 30 million dollar worlds. 30 million dollar Hollywood. 30 million dollar, <laughs> 30 million dollar reels. Now that's, yeah. that's why you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you have all those writer's room credits, Walt. <laughs> I do. I do. I wrote for, uh, I wrote for Bosch. Uh, I wrote Hieronymus a lot. Bosch? No, the show, Bosch. Uh, I wrote a lot oh. for Arrested Development, and I wrote for Rosie after Rosie left. Mm-hmm. Oh. I did uh, oh. I did Punch Up on <laughs> <You> uh, <laughs> fucking yeah. The Sopranos. Wow. <laughs> Wouldn't you have been like... <laughs> it was not funny at all soul. until I got into the room. <laughs> It was really dry stuff. And he then was a I, child <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> well, there's some funny Sopranos episodes. Well, at least there's funny parts of Sopranos episodes. Oh, no, I mean, I, I didn't want to announce it on the pod, but uh, that Lucifer, where I'm the showrunner, it did get season four confirmed. Yeah. Look, look for us, <laughs> look, looks for us next spring. Yeah. I'm so ashamed of you, Dan. I really <laughs> wish that you would stop writing that show. It's just, it's just, it's bad for you. It's bad for the world. Amazon uh. has connected us with the director, uh, Huang. Don't, look, listen, we're, there, we're, there's no way we're getting that, frankly. And it's what? Well, it's, well, it's, Walter, it's, it's just it's, his fucking name. Just it's just, just a name. You say, say it. I pulled it up. It's, it's Huang Dong 
Hyuk. Hwang Dong Hyuk. We're going to have to change that. Uh, I, uh, okay. First note. <laughs> you, you, you say it needs to be changed is worse than you, like, just saying. It's, it's so much worse. Oh, you made it weird. <laughs> so what's wrong with that name, Walter? <laughs> just Explain in detail, linguistically. Uh, let me look up. I Hang on. Apparently this is Korean. Uh, yes, it's a South Korean. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, we're we're writing a Korean show. Okay. We gotta we gotta appeal to a mass market here. So we're gonna okay. give the characters. I pulled up the names here. We're just gonna give them names. Uh, let, 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 like let, let, Johnny <laughs> Thunderbolt. Oh uh, God. Or if we don't know, uh, we'll just call someone the main guy, and we'll fill out the names uh, as we go okay. on. You know. Well, maybe let, right. let's explain what the premise of Squid Game is since we're making a yeah, sequel. Dan, why don't you explain, yeah. explain right. what Squid Game is? So it's set in, like, the modern day in South Korea, which, if you don't know, is, like, in terms of economic inequality, like, even worse than the United States. Okay, what if it's um, historic, though? Ooh. What? I like what if Squid that? Game 2 is in history? We can Yo, do that. Uh, Squid Game 2, history. back to the past. Hey, yeah. Hey, guys, I know we're really excited here, but as the as the showrunner, as the showrunner, I think that we should really, I think I really need to keep keep y'all hemmed in. We need to go, we just need to go over, you know, you got to respect the past before you get to the future. So let's, let's just, let's talk about Squid Game 1. Yeah, and okay, well, if right, you interrupt okay. me one, one more time, one, I'm hiring a guild hitman to silence you. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Daniel, one more sense, one more sense. A bunch of people that are deeply in debt play children's games to win a lot of money, but they are killed uh, in the process. What if they're rich, though? Uh, see, what if all the people okay. playing are rich? That's what people want to see on screen. That's, they want succession is what they want. <laughs> I got an idea here. What if we uh, have them, we kind of bring in marketable children's game Beyblade, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Right, oh, oh, we get them cooking. to play Yu-Gi-Oh for their lives uh, uh, in Squid Game Two. Yeah. Get some IPs gonna in pop there. Yes, off. we get yes. them to play Counter Strike. We're gonna have animated Yugi Moto uh, from the <laughs> from the show show up in the real world. Oh my God, <laughs> Fortnite's going to be begging for the crossover, dude. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, Wait, this is it. sick. You struck gold here, yeah, because the thing that Yu-Gi-Oh has never had is like a competent live-action adaptation. Yeah, yeah, or a and, TV show, and or actually, anything. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, actually, in the original, um, in the original uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, like uh, King of Games stuff, he was hardcore, man. Like, like Yu-Gi Mo, he would like he like shoot people with a gun. Yeah, no, Squid like, Game's game. fucked up, right? Because we can take yeah. we can take these kid properties that people think they know <laughs> and just make it like yeah. fucked up. Yeah, that's the core of Squid Game is yeah. making kid games <laughs> fucked up. Dude. Like, what, if, what if the Beyblade? Okay, what if the bit? At the bottom, on a dildo. Whoa. <laughs> no. Standing okay. on a dildo. We, we got to keep this as, there. we got it. We can kill as many people as we want, but this is America and we have to keep it marketable. Okay. Uh, I have a fucking razor blade. We can literally blades. garrot people with their own entrails in this show. Like, nothing's off the table except for anything sexual. Our first game has got to be one that can kill a whole bunch of people off. Because the idea yeah. is you start with a lot okay. of people and you kill them off like in a big one in the first one. And you kill progressively fewer of them as you go on. So yeah, you get like a right. smaller cast. So yeah, like a really lethal game. Or just a game that would eliminate like half the participants or something like that. OK, right. About? Oh, it's like over half. Right. Because I think I think what happens in the first episode Y'all are is talking like a over, lot like for people who third. we don't want to so, you know, rely too badly on the source material for this. Right. Sure. Well, as the showrunner, I think it's kind of my job to, you know, just You're keep us runner? within the rails. Your name is. I, uh, hang on. Yeah, I'm Huang Dong Hyuk. Dong -Hyuk. <laughs> You're Huang Dong Hyuk. Do you yeah. want to affirm that for the audience listening? Right no, now? I will not. I will oh, yeah. not. Yeah. I still uh, have no. creativity. No, he's no, he's, no he's, saying he's the director. I'm the showrunner. You know, we have a sort of like, oh. like piece, you know, two piece relationship. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, sure, sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. If, if we need a game, um, combine Yu Gi Oh! and Yo, Pokemon. How about fucking, okay. We save the IPs for the later games. Oh, and okay. 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 the yeah. first game is something that will eliminate 75% of people, double jump rope, which no one can do. Okay. All right, double jump rope, huh? Well, I, okay, it's like a sharp jump rope or something, right? Well, my understanding it's is that girls rope. could do jump rope. Oh, shit. Well, 
What if it's all girls? What if that's preposterous? And what if they're all school no. <laughs> girls? Just throw that out there. Oh, mm, mm. kids need money too to buy Bakugan. Yes. So, so what we're talking about here, where I think we're going with this here, jump rope, school girls. We are moving the dais. Well, actually, it hasn't left Korea at all, has it? No, it no, hasn't. It's sort of. No, no, it's no, we're being very they're, respectful of the culture. Yeah. They're they're idols. No, they're idols. They're 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 K pop oh, idols. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. shit, okay. they're idols? Yeah, they're K pop no. idols. Yeah. Competing okay. to the and death at oh. children's the main, games. The main guy of Squid Game from season one, he's like uh he goes up to the guy who runs Squid Game, the bad guy, and he's like, I know what you did to me, and I want in on the next round. <laughs> <laughs> I want and his in name, on however the money is yeah. made. His <laughs> name is Song. Reaction. The main guy's name is Song. The main guy's name is Song. And he can sing K-pop. That's really? a stretch, I oh, think. Oh, shit. No, he's right. His name is Song. I'm reading it right now. Main okay. guy. Okay, our hero, our protagonist, he has a song in his heart. Right? Okay. okay, so... He wants to make his so, big break. So that's what... Okay, so what we've got so far, right? Um... Song is the new Squid Game runner. He's the he's the runner of Squid Game too. Yeah, and his Squid Game involves gathering up a bunch of failed idols and uh, saying that they they can succeed. Right, they can succeed, and we'll give them a, a record deal or whatever they do for idols. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if if and only if they play the squid games okay they play that these squid out. games yeah dude yeah what yeah, if yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. I, was, I just got a text actually uh from jeff bezos here uh and okay. the title of the show <laughs> legally has to be uh squid game to the maze runner uh no. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, okay, network well, notes. Uh, you know, as Hollywood folks yeah. are used to dealing with those, a little network note for you. Oh, it's just executives think they can do whatever they want, but we do have to do it. Uh, so, Squid Game there's... Two: New Moon Maze Runner. Okay, Squid okay, Game Two: okay. The Maze Runner. Uh, just uh, riffing, well, we just get... What if there's a Minotaur can... character? Okay. Yes. 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 Just throwing it out yes. there. Just run hot. Okay. So this okay. Minotaur character, right. he wants to sing, right? Yeah. He's one of the yes. idols, and he's been fucking yes. fucked over because he's the only A non-woman, B Minotaur uh, mm -hmm. in the group, right? Yeah, it's like it's, it's the traditional body type isn't there, mm -hmm. you know? What if his name was Bull Gogi? Huh? Bull Gogi. <laughs> Bull what if Gogi. his name was Bull Gogi? That's and pretty. Was, uh, dude, you it's... are running hot tonight. Okay. <laughs> is it is it Gogi or Gogi? Whatever. <laughs> Bulgogi. <laughs> Bulgogi. Uh, hell yeah. I like Bulgogi. Oh, okay. So we got Bulgogi. Bul uh, Bulgogi. All right. I, Johnny I'm Thunder, the main character. Yeah, or Johnny Song. Yeah, go on. Johnny Song. We got Johnny Song, who is the Squid Game runner. Yeah, yeah. he's the and then we've got main Bul character from the last he's season. He's the big squid. He's the big squid. Yeah. He's now Chief Squid uh, yeah. in charge of the games. Now, hold on. We have one Minotaur person, you said? Minotaur person. This is an eight hundred million dollar franchise. How are you Wait. not in tune with this? <laughs> You're gonna sell no, billions of this guy. Is it? It's is it in like a big maze? And to like get to the next part of the maze, you have to play the game. Yeah, and also I think the Minotaur he can't jump rope that right that well, right? But putting it in the maze gives him a distinct home field advantage. So they okay. have to, oh, okay. because they because the idols need him to get through the maze, they have to help him through the games. Oh, the no, end. I think we have a good mm. angle on this. So yeah. we opened the series on Bulgogi. Yeah. And he, he's yes. just sympathetic as all hell, man. He's just <laughs> downtrodden by society. He's like in he one of those to, corner yeah. bars, yeah, drinking yeah, cheap yeah, yeah. soju. He tries to get into yeah. the he's subway crushing the glass and his horns his hand, get yeah. caught. And he's like, oh, man, right. Bulgogi, man, no. <laughs> he works two jobs as a bagging. Uh, he bags at like a grocery store. Yes, and, and a badminton uh, ball retriever. Yes. <laughs> He, he the two most, the two biggest employers in South Korea, <laughs> so the Badminton Association and convenience stores. It actually does. It's it's heinous that those 
that they pay those ball retrievers like minimum wage. It's insane to me. Well, because, that's what he wants uh, to change. Yeah, well, so, yeah, well, no, he wants to be an idol. Bull, no, we can't. Bull, bull we gotta Gogi, take his character seriously. Bulgogi is deep in debt to the South Korean mob, and they're gonna take his balls to sell to the highest bidder if he doesn't pay off the money. Mm, okay. So he needs that's to get an idol contract to make a lot of I, money. I just don't feel like that's with the Squid Game vibe. You know, I just from no? the feeling I get. Uh, from the original, I just feel like involving organized crime uh-huh. uh, and a threat. That, that, that's just like not the spirit of the program, man. I'm sorry yeah, to say. Yeah, it's about games. He's in debt about to games. the Korean IRS. It's all fun games. And the Korean IRS are going to repossess his balls. <laughs> They're going to repossess <laughs> his balls. Taxes. They're going to grind his horns down into medicine. Oh, my God. The audience is going to be just like, no, no. No, I, I hate the IRS. I love Bulgogi. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, he's, a, yeah. he's a fuck up, right? So when we finally see him in the maze, right? And when he steps up and he's like, wait. When he puts on that dress to sing uh, yeah. before he's about to do the jump rope competition, that's when we know we got a star on our hands, right? Belvin, right. go. Continue, continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when he's in the maze, he is in his element. It's like you're seeing a new bull go gi emerge. Mm, you know? He's going gi, and that's the tagline uh, for the show. Squid Game 2, the maze runner, go gi. Now, now we'll have to test that because I that might be Pokemon, offensive. I don't know what go that means. Gi. Is that anything? I'm just riffing here. I'm just no, spitting. It's that's nothing. That's nothing. What if they play Pokemon Go? No, I think we found the tie-in. They play Poke. That's one of the games. They play Pokemon that's good. Go. That actually matches up a lot with this maze we've got, this labyrinth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes, it, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now, wait. A maze is not a labyrinth. Let's be clear. But can they both be going to be a maze and a labyrinth? Wrong. Okay, whatever. Okay. Okay. A maze is As the showrunner, I thought I needed to. Okay. Belvin, you're spitting fire. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to think about the other characters, right? Okay. We need us. We need a a strong female character. So, yes, Bogey exactly. has uh, a friend. A friend of his from when he served in the South Korean Defense Force. Oh shit! They all have to do that. Yeah, and she comes yes. into the games with him, and she's tough. She's got it. She pulls him through Ooh, the games. Uh, a lady. The lady with a little fight in her, eh? Yeah, a lady I, soldier. Yeah. Can we make her, her name is Gochu Jane? <laughs> Gochu Jane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Do y'all think we can get Gina Carino? Do y'all yeah. think to play okay. Gochu Jane? My close <laughs> yeah. personal friend Gina Carino? Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, the, know the who woman that who is. owned The Mandalorian. The woman who just took that show by the cojones, having her play I, what what was the name then? Gochu Jane. Gochu Jane. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um I actually was her uh staff writer for Fast Six, you know? And I wrote the line where she was like, Do you want to drive fast or do you want to drive fast with your family? And <laughs> that actually uh set me up for a great professional working sh- relationship with her, so I can give her a call and we'll yeah, give yeah. her preferential casting on Gochu Jane. Did uh, the you? Minotaur's friend. Huh. Yeah. Did you also write that KFC commercial where she's like, you could drive fast or you could drive fast to KFC and get this family bucket meal? Yeah, the, the, that <laughs> line actually, uh, I got a lot of, uh, there was a period of time where I was just tweeting out that line to directors because yeah. that's how you get noticed yeah. in the industry yeah. is that's I'm the like, biz. watch the GIF. Here's the line I wrote. And I would do that. I'd send it to 50, 60 uh, directors a day, uh, and then the grind, accounts yeah. that I suspected yeah. were their alt accounts after their mains uh, block me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was a lot of is. capitalization on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grinds in his sleep. Okay, okay, and just one more character, one who's a little kooky, you know, one who's a little wacky. You know, right. you know so, something for guy. the kids in the audience. Go to yes. Jane also, uh, I'm getting word from Jeff Bezos, she has to be a... Uh, affiliated with the IDF formally in some way so that we can uh, accrue some like major, major sponsorship dollars for this show. All right. Yeah. She okay. was with the IDF and then she transferred to South Korean military to do joint yeah, training sense. operations in the mountains. Um, yeah. People aren't going to look yeah. too oh. closely into that. See, yeah, I, I'm sorry that I'm sorry to do this then because like then, then I don't think we can get Gina Carino for that role. I think we have to get 
uh, Gal Gadot. How about Gal Gadot playing Colonel Sanders mm. in South mm. Korea? And we have an homage to that one line. Yeah. They the bucket. do like that yeah. guy over in Korea. They, they love that They like dude. fried chicken yeah. in South Korea, they yeah. Do. Yeah, you know, I think it would be they sensitive of us to include, fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> include Colonel Sanders. Look, it's not... It's, I will attest to the fact that in other countries... What we consider to be the shittiest fast food is actually elevated. Like, I don't know how they do it. McDonald's mm-hmm. in London, incredible. Okay, so incredible. Are we, we're thinking Colonel Sanders is like the comic relief, huh? Yep, but played by Gal Gadot. I don't know how this dang Bakugan works. You know, you know Gal Gadot's been looking to break kind of out of the typecast that she's fallen into. Mm-hmm. I think she'd really bite on this. I think she'd really be into... You know, showing that she can play a real meaty, dramatic, and comic role in Colonel Sanders in Squid Game 2, The Maze Runner. Do you think she's okay with looking at the camera three times an episode and saying it's finger looking good? I think that contractually, yeah. she would have to say that or we would let her go. Yeah. 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 I, mean, that, I mean, obviously. And I think she'd get that that's part of the character, too. That's pretty core to the character that she's playing. So I think well, she'd understand the journey of it. Yeah. We all got the same letter from the same KFC lawyer about the requirements for the sponsorship <laughs> deal. We read the damn email. KFC <laughs> and the IDF, as well as the Maze Runner. <laughs> also, uh, we should set it in L.A. just because it's the most relatable city, I think, for people like watching TV. You know? Yeah, that's true. Is it, you gotta get some familiarity in there. I mean, we're being really experimental with this like tough woman character. They fly a lot of the Koreans in, right, to do Squid Game Two in L.A. because the taxes are better than in Korea. Well, you can actually source a lot of Koreans locally in L.A., San Francisco. You could get an. I could get interns to build me a labyrinth in an afternoon. The uh, the woods in Georgia, the woods in Georgia, really cheap shooting location. Is there any way that uh, they're all hanging out and? Uh, the Savannah, Georgia, uh, metropolitan area. What if it's what if we shoot aerial shots? <laughs> 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 yeah, let's do aerial shots of Savannah, but it's actually shot in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. say it's LA. <laughs> uh, <what>? Okay. <laughs> then that gives us more budget for CGI and Gal Gadot and to Colonel Sanders. I love that. Thank I you. love right. that. Yeah. You yeah. know how hard it is to get aerial shots in LA after Kobe died? They're not letting anybody out in the sky right now. <laughs> it's on lockdown. Uh, so yeah, I do think Georgia's the move. Yeah, no, it's the th- unfortunately. I think if we're going to spend all of this money on famous actors and uh, obviously the very expensive sets <laughs> in Georgia <laughs> and, and or Savannah, um, I think we do we do have to um, you know save some money by just getting the a lot of the Korean actors from Squid Game One. In to for Squid Game Two, so can we ret- retcon a lot of their deaths? I'd assume we'd have that authority, oh, right? Absolutely, that's good. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, just yeah, absolutely. good writing. It's uh, basically going to be the same people. It's just now there's a Minotaur and there's Gal Gadot. <laughs> well, maybe we can have this dramatic moment where Bull Gogi kneels down and he's at the end of his rope and he prays. Mm-hmm. He just clasps his hoofs together. And he uh, he says, God, if, if you're real, bring me back, my friends. And then we see everyone we lost. Yo. Coming from a portal. God's portal. Yo, <laughs> that's sick. And let me tell you something else. That happens at the end of episode one. So oh, people yeah. know the game is Get changed, hooked, yeah. right? Get people know this season's gonna be way <laughs> fucking different. It's gonna be way better. It's gonna be way. Oh yeah. Like, okay, we saw you dribble yeah. before. Now you can dunk. Now you can dunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've always said. I've always said the worst thing about Squid Game One is that is the stakes are too high. <laughs> We will because, have to, because he knew all the people in Squid Game 1, we will yeah. have to Photoshop or digitally edit a Minotaur into the first <laughs> season of Squid Game. We gotta Game. get Bulgogi in there. We gotta... Yeah. 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 He's he's wrong shot, you know? <laughs> Just well, like Millie Lucas done. sitting down and watching episode 4, and he's like, fuck, where, where's Java? Where's Java? This is all wrong. It'll be seamless. No one will know, really. So Bulgogi, Bul, no, Bulgogi dies in the first episode no, of Squid Bulgogi, Game 1. No, 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 no. will never die. What, why would you kill your cash cow? 
Okay. Why okay. would you kill the person that the world is going to fall in love with? Look, as the showrunner, I just wanted to like, sort of marry the grinder. two. Okay. Do you shoot Baby Yoda? Yes, actually. Do you give Baby I, Yoda terminal illness? Uh, oh, that no. actually reminds <laughs> me, though. We should fake kill Bulgogi, like, many times. Like, like, Absolutely. Once an episode, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, like once an episode. Maybe two or three times an yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, we have to do Give that a lot. Give them fake out. Give oh, them yeah. a, little, a little heart murmur, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think oh, that no, or no, three no. times an episode, yeah. yeah. Two, two or three times, I yeah. think also, like, a central plot. So it's L.A. Uh, remember how a central plot of Squid Game 1 was that uh, the bad guy who ran Squid Game, uh, he had the only gun in Korea, right? And so he was able to do whatever that he wanted. That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds uh, like what happened. In yeah. L.A., there's guns everywhere. So the tension, the power dynamic is crazy because the players have guns, right? They're bringing them into the games. Oh, yeah, a little Boondock Saints in here. Just like sprinkling a little John Wick, too. That's hot right now. They're that's, all just packing heat. There we go. So, so <laughs> that's just it. That's it. His power... Uh, Johnny Song's power over everyone else is that he is the only man without a gun in L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just his voice, man. Yeah. His voice is the weapon. His voice and potent yes. nerve gas uh, that he uses <laughs> <laughs> to to instill order and get people to participate in the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, no. so, so uh, let's just let's just lay out a, a quick little game. Um, yeah. I think Pokemon Absolutely. Go. Okay, yeah, I love that. Yes. Should, should come in episode four. People are getting tired. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, how mm -hmm. are they going to bring something new in now? We, we just, off the bat, they can talk to the Pokemon. Yo. Yo. They, yeah. they can they can maybe uh, get close to the Pokemon. You learn haven't about had the a Pokemon's bad idea since this episode started. Interests. <laughs> maybe get a little, little, little close, like cuddle up with the Pokemon. Get a little Ryan Reynolds cameo, maybe. Oh, you know, a little oh, spot. Pikachu oh, kind of tie in there. Know, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. internet internet said Danny DeVito should be Detective Pikachu. Mm. What if we make Danny DeVito Pokemon? Um, yes. Uh, I got you one better. What if we okay. What if we cut out this Johnny Song guy and Danny DeVito <laughs> plays him? Uh, yeah, that's an actor people like. So we get oh like a God, fucking yes. feathered wig, right? Uh, yeah, and he yeah. sings in Korean like, like a, repeatedly yeah, throughout there's the like show. An establishing scene at the beginning where he's leaving an airport and then, or he's checking into a flight and then the flight attendant asks him, uh, "Johnny Song, is this your reservation? I've never ridden an airplane before, so I don't know exactly how it works." <laughs> and then he's like, uh, "Yes, that's me, Johnny Song. You may also know me and as you know the main guy from the last season." He says the guy's <laughs> name, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. Sung Bung, uh, listen, I don't know, but Mr. No, Mr. Please, Song, Johnny Song. please let's look at this beautifully raced name. <laughs> Just shoot from the hip, brother. <laughs> Just shoot from the hip, Mr. Oh. Johnny Song. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. I, I was kind of thinking that something heavy would fall on the original actor's head. Like, again, for like two minutes at the beginning. And then, like, just like, so, you know, someone's hiding Easter eggs and the big Easter egg fall out of a tree. And he's like, bonk. And then he yeah. gets up and he's dying to be done. We're done. You know, <laughs> that like, makes okay. so much sense. It's so much okay. answered, asked and answered, you know. So, yeah. so we've got Danny DeVito for sure. We got Danny yeah. DeVito. Yeah, he's so, my friend. Okay, let's go back to episode four for just a second. I think um, we yeah, got to get kill real Pikachu. close to the Pokemon. They get like real, yeah. real close. Yeah, you get real close. They get real close. They develop this sort of like trainer uh, Pokemon sort of uh, interaction. And by the end of the episode, they have to kill and eat their Pokemon. Yeah. Right? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. there we go. I want to yes. see the Minotaur tearfully ripping apart a Porygon <laughs> so that Colonel Sanders can fry it uh, so they can survive. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're far, redefining television. We have the beginning and end of a pilot, and we have the season four script or the episode four script. Yeah, yeah. That, in it's, Hollywood, it, that's what you pitch. That's yeah, and, right. and episode one's going to be pretty hard for us to do. But let's, because there's going to be a lot of ideas bouncing around, a lot of establishing shit. But yeah. let's start off with episode two, right? They're in the middle of the game. Everyone has guns. Everyone's been brought back to life via the God mm -hmm. Portal right. at the end yeah. of episode one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Minotaur, we reveal that he's alive after he got shot uh, last episode. Right. Yeah, uh, the cliffhanger <laughs> of him potentially dying. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it's Yu-Gi-Oh time, right? And yes. who, who's there to help out but animated 
Yugi Moto from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! animated series. He's there, okay. and it's kind of a Who Framed Roger Rabbit situation because the players are like, is he real or is this just the nerve gas, right? I, I'm okay it's with being that. being deployed on me. But psychological. If, we get psychological with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They're like, am I hallucinating a cartoon character? And they just talk about that. The Only if Jason oh, Statham yeah. voices Yugi. Okay. Jason oh, Statham. Yeah. I'm a duelist. Yugi Moto. Yugi Moto. I got to draw the cards. I'm the, I'm the king of games, I am. <laughs> You've come in a mess with the fucking king of games. Yeah, that's menacing. Yeah, no, just, and he has a gun. gun. And he, of uh, course, is a gun. Oh, he has many he, guns. Uh, Listen, he's an anime character. He can pull guns out of whatever he wants, frankly. He's, he's going to curve some bullets. Colonel Sanders wanted. is terrible yep. at Yu-Gi-Oh. He's struggling. Yes. And uh, yeah, the fucking uh, Bull Gogi, He's he has to be like, do I like potentially lose this game by stepping away from the table to give some advice uh, to Colonel Sanders so he can top deck it out. Now, okay, you said say, step away from the table, but as we actually discussed earlier, we we have got the rights to Kaiba's like uh, dual sort deck, of a, yeah, yeah, dual yeah. deck arena sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So well, he has to he has to step away from their arena. Yeah, he arena. like walks down the staircase from the yeah. arena, and he walks to the next arena next door. Yeah, he has to go through the maze, and his his chess clock is still running. Oh, I've there's never a played clock, Ubio, and he's but... like, "You lose all your life points if oh, the clock yeah, reaches." No, oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, the suspense at this moment. This is so. I'm cool. on the edge of my seat, and he's the only one who can do it because he's a minotaur. And he knows how to navigate the maze. Already. He knocks on the door to Colonel Sanders' arena. Uh, that he somehow knew where it was and also knew that the colonel was having a bad time at the game. It's a maze. Min Min yeah, maze. Yeah, maze. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there's kind of like a cute moment where Colonel Sanders is like about to cry and he's like, sorry, I have to get this door before I lose my last life point. And the Minotaur is like opening the door and they have like kind of a cute moment and then like some ukulele probably would play. Yeah. I think okay. we get some like uplifting ukulele. Right. I think a lot of the track actually for the show... Yeah, uh, you know, be I've been that. watching this uh, this cool ass sitcom, Modern Family, um, and there's just this really heartwarming music that plays at the end of the episode sometimes. And I just think it'd be really nice to get a guy in here, kind of rip that shit off, um, <laughs> and repackage that, well, and, and, and just, just, just have like a nice wrap up where it's like, you know, I I see now that what's important is not winning the game; it's my friendship with you, Colonel Sanders. Right. Yeah. Well, and the, well we have yeah. uh, we, the way that Bulgogi knows that Colonel Sanders is going to have a hard times is we have a flashback to the end of the Civil War, where, as we all know, Robert history. E. Lee Brain was history. defeated by Ulysses S. Grant in a four thousand life point match of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, because he top decked <laughs> Exodia. And it was yeah. an instant win. He couldn't beat Ulysses S. Grant's Red Eyes Black Dragon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's haunted him ever since. And the Confederacy's had a problem. A lot of the legacy problems the Confederacy had stem from Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, actually, you know, in the modern day. Then the Minotaur comes back and his opponent's like, you were one second short on the clock. And the Minotaur's like, yeah. But I help my friends. And then he pulls out a shotgun and blows his opponent away. <laughs> oh, and then it goes slow yeah. motion. And then it goes slow. And you know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy's soul gets sucked into the shadow realm, which is real. Right. Uh, and it exists. <laughs> as it, as oh, do we create a tie away. in shadow realm for the show? Maybe that's the god portal they come yes. out of. Maybe we tie Yu-Gi-Oh! more centrally into this thing. Oh, no, this is great. So all of the people that came back, the, the the god portal has exacted a price. So the guy who ran the previous squid game, Pegasus, yes. uh, he gets it taken over by Danny DeVito, uh, mm -hmm. and then he finds Pegasus's keys to the Shadow Realm, or the Minotaur, and it unlocks it, and we get the people back. Listen, a lot of this yeah, is boilerplate storytelling. I, I, I do think that we explained that in the flashback season finale. Mm. Okay. So yeah, no like, one knows you know, what's going exists. on. What's going on? Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. What's going Flashback on? Season and then at the end, we understand. Yes, we Go understand the maze Cheery on a Sunday. The maze that we're running isn't just the maze. The maze is is family. Here's what. Oh, there's the maze is family, dude. There's the tagline. Yes. Tag, tagline right there, dude. <laughs> what if? Okay, 
hang on, final episode, here's how it ends, right? Uh, yeah. They've survived, a lot of the people have died to the squid or whatever, uh, yeah. eats them at the end of the game. Yeah, the last game, of course, is the squid game where... Fighting a squid, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a giant squid, of course. In the yeah. water, it's favored terrain. Yeah. Uh, so they're running through this maze and like, where's the way out? We beat the last game. And then they run into, they turn a corner and they run into themselves. Whoa. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then all, I'm going to say Colonel Sanders probably died in the finale and the Minotaur and uh, Bulgogi and Jochu Jane are left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, it's just the two of them that are left with, that they run into as well. And all right. four of them turn to the camera like, what is going to happen now? And then we yeah. hear a gunshot, and Bulgogi falls. Is he okay? <laughs> Is Bulgogi going to be okay? <laughs> Cut to black. <laughs> and that, that's the season. Gotta tune in for the next one. Gotta keep subscribed to Amazon Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Guys, this is like one of the greatest things this podcast has ever accomplished. And I, you know, yeah, bad mouth 38 y'all all minutes the time. of pure ADHD. You get nothing done. <laughs> uh, to my face, yeah. I think, see, this, I, I take umbrage with that because ADHD, ADHD is about not being focused and about. Not no, not being able to put your attention on the right thing. I think we focus on all the right things here. I think we hit, we hit it out of the park. Yeah, uh, Belvin, when you were describing the scene, uh, we had to cut away because <laughs> we got too excited uh, and there was a lot of howling. But yeah. when you were deci- describing the scene at the end where the Minotaur gets shot, uh, right as like he runs into his doppelganger in the maze, yes. I was about to cry because that yeah. was like the most beautiful television writing I'd ever seen. And then that uh, 10 minute monologue from the doppelganger Minotaur about how it really isn't society's fault that uh, poor people are uh, suffering. Yeah, I think it's an AI that's actually the bad guy uh, yeah. we decided on and not uh, <laughs> not yes. any like actual societal force. Yeah, yeah I, no one it, rich. No one rich is bad. No one yeah. bad. Bezos yeah. did but, give us that note. I, I got well, that. I'm hearing actually. back he from the producers, yeah. and it's only going to be about seven hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars an episode. So it's really we're saving a lot of money here. Yeah, yeah I mean, cheap. once we cut Staying all the original Georgia, actors out, yeah. frankly, uh, mm-hmm. replace them with more marketable American alternatives. I think this is going to be the best season two of any TV show that's ever aired. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting that up against Frasier season two. Yeah, I'm putting that up against Breaking Holy Bad shit, season two, the best season of Breaking Bad. I'm putting that up against God, Rick and Morty season two, Runaways All right. season two, Runaways season two. All Fantastic right, show. a lot of great season, season, two. Two. <laughs> season two, Community season two, True Detective season two. Better than Nova the original. Science Now, PBS season two. <laughs> yes, gentlemen, this has truly been my honor and privilege to write with you this evening. And uh, you'll let us know when the check's clear, right? Uh, oh, of course. I Listen, we're, we're gonna... Go, you we'll know be I in take my paycheck in Twitch Primes. You yeah. know, I, I just want the equivalent in the monetary value of Twitch Primes, so I can give <laughs> lots of Twitch Primes. Right, all the loot boxes, please. Yes. Well, folks, that's our show. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice to get new episodes every other Saturday. If you want, go ahead and write us a review on iTunes and share us with anyone who likes world building. It really helps us out. Make sure to catch Squid Game 2, The Maze Runner, Go Gee, in theaters or streaming in late 2022. Our art is courtesy of the talented and wonderful Shell Tor at Jovial Paradox on Twitter. You can tweet at us too at Lorelads or send us spirited hate mail at 30minuteworlds at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and as always, go gee.